Hello my friends and welcome back to EVE Online with me Mark from Dadex and today we're going to have a quick look at the Dominix, the Galante battleship and the drones it is going to deploy and in particular sentry drones which I've not used very often. We're going to have a quick look at them today and how I've found a way to use them that kind of fits my play style. So first let's have a quick look at the fit of course that we've got on the Dominix and the very beginning of the story of course is going to be the hull bonuses so for Galente battleship skills we're going to get 10% bonus to drone damage and hit points per level and 7.5% to drone optimal range and tracking speed also down below we've got some bonuses we're not actually getting the benefit of because we're not using armor plates we're not going for a passive tank today we've got a nice active tank let's have a look at that basically this ship is a battery designed to tank and deploy drones. So, up in the high slots, I've got two drone link augmenters. I've got the Tech 2 versions here. They make the numbers nice and matched for me. Next to them, we've got one remote armor repairer and one remote shield booster. This is to repair the drones, particularly the sentry drones. They will take some aggro. You can just top them up. Without these modules active, if I switch them off and also switch off the micro warp drive, you'll see we are cap stable. We can sit and tank. We've got dual reps as we'll see. But let's switch everything back on. <laughs> we've got a tractor beam and we've got a salvager if you want to do some of that. I don't usually linger around doing that on missions. There's not a lot of isk in it. In the mid slots, we have got cap rechargers. I've got one compact and three tech twos. You can vary these. Tech 2s are obviously going to give you the most increase to your cap. There's not a lot in it, to be honest with you. We're getting 20% off the Tech 2. We're getting 17.5% off the Compact, so the choice is yours, really. See how your cap stability works out for you with your skills. We've got a micro warp drive in here, in this case a restrained one. We're going to use that to control our position on grid. Alternatives would be an afterburner, but with sentry drones you want to stay close to them, as we'll see or a micro jump drive. I prefer the control a micro warp drive gives you all over the grid as opposed to a jump drive which obviously fires you 100 kilometers point to point around the grid. We'll talk about that because situationally that could be the best option. In the bottoms I've got a reactive armor hardener. That's showing there 15% resistances to all types of damage. It's actually going to vary. If I'm only getting hit by Kinetic and Thermal by the Serpentis, then I'll get 30% resistances to each of those. Although that will slightly balance because I'll probably be getting more Kinetic damage. You can check that while it's running. It is an active module. We've got dual reppers here. I've got large armor repairer twos. I've yet to really need to use the second one. We'll talk about that as well. I've got a Thermal armor hardener two and a Kinetic armor hardener two two drone damage amplifier too so a lot of tech two modules on here you could downgrade some up in the rig slots not much variety we've got a capacitor control circuit a capacitor control circuit and a capacitor control circuit so we are basically a capacitor that dispenses drones and stays alive to pick them up when everything's dead it comes in this fit at about 387 million it says there i've only got a mobile tractor unit in there that's six million so it's not too expensive it's about the same kind of price as the raven it's a bit more expensive than the navy issue drake which i do like flying it's also comparable to the raven that this is a very safe fit i take no credit for this fit i pulled this off the peg as a level four mission running dominix fit it's very similar to the raven fit it's a lot of capacitor it's a lot of tank you can vary the tank then once you've got experience of running the sites in it to maybe give yourself a little bit more DPS. We could maybe drop some of the resistance or maybe drop one of the reppers, who knows, and get another drone damage amplifier in there. We might be able to remove one of these batteries maybe if we're never getting anywhere near low on capacitor and add something like a target painter which would allow us to grab aggro off the rats. And protect the drones a little bit that way and also help the damage application of the drones so there are options what i like about this ship is its huge drone bay and as you will see we've got some light drones we've got some medium drones we've got some heavy drones and here we have the wardens the sentry drones now sentry drones are stationary 
you deploy them they stay where you put them and they shoot and they are quite long range weapon systems the wardens here we've got an optimal of 81.25 kilometers that's being modified by the hull bonus battleship skill bonus and by drone sharp shooting which gives me an effective range of about 100 kilometers obviously they do just kinetic damage it's all racially set so whichever flavor of drone you've got the damage is set to that one type they have very very poor tracking but that shouldn't be an issue at such a long range so we've got about a hundred kilometer range on the wardens we've got a hundred kilometer locking range for the targeting and we've got a hundred and two kilometer drone control range and that's not really relevant to the wardens but it does mean that anywhere we can shoot stuff, we could send drones out there. It gives us a lot of flexibility and the synergy of these three numbers, 100, 100 and 100, is obviously very useful. Let me just see which drones we've got selected in the simulation. I believe it's kind of pre-selected the WASPs. So we've got 480 DPS with the Kaldari Navy WASP drones. If we deactivate all of those, switch on the Wardens. We drop about 100 DPS with the Wardens. But it's the range that is the thing. And I found a very particular way of using these at the beginning of a room that allows me to run the rest of the room at my leisure and my pleasure, keeping the ship safe and the drones busy. We've got pretty good resistances versus the Serpentis. Our explosive damage resistance is very low on the shields. I've not bothered to do anything about the explosive hole on the shields. And I have done some missions versus Angel Cartel and their explosive damage and I've not had any problems. Do bear in mind, of course, that the reactive armor hardener will be filling that hole a little bit if we're mostly getting hit by explosive damage anyway. So this is the basic fit. As I say, use it if you like and then maybe think about, do I need this much tank? Can I put up the damage output? Or can I put up the damage application? Something along those lines. But as a starting point, this is very sound and it's very safe. And of course, when you put this much money into a ship, the first thing you want to do is not lose it. I don't think you should ever lose a ship on a level 4 mission, with the exception of the burners maybe, unless you're just not paying attention or it's all gone horribly, horribly wrong for some reason. If we just open the information screen for the Wardens, and we're going to open the comparison screen actually, as you can see, there's only Navy tech 1 and tech 2 versions you could, can't get the integrated or the augmented versions of sentry drones and what I'm going to do if I've left this set right is we're going to drag in a bouncer a curator and a guard so we're going to get rid of that extra warden we're going to get rid of the warden 2 no we're not yes we are there we go remove so we've got the four racial drone types here. We're shown only attributes that differ. And you'll see it's not only damage type that differs. We have got damage modifiers. And most relevantly, we've got range. So we go from short range to long range. So the guard, putting out thermal damage, very short range, bouncers, Explosive damage, I get about 45 kilometers out of those as an optimal when they're in my ship. Curator, the Amari drones, 64 EM damage, slightly longer range. And then the Wardens, which are doing kinetic damage with the longest range, the lowest damage modifier and the worst tracking. So that's the theory, let's put it into practice. This is a mission versus the Angel Cartel actually unauthorized military presence i haven't adjusted the ship fit itself for the angels rat which are mostly dealing explosive damage but i've not changed the tank at all i think the reactive armor hardener will deal with it i've mostly got minmatar drones to do explosive damage apart from my large drones which are still kaldari navy wasps here in this first room i'm just going to speed the footage up and get through this i'm only putting out the medium drones initially until one of them gets a big kicking I bring them in, put out the small light drones, which do kill these cruisers quite quickly on other sites. The cruisers can tank the light drones, but here they take down the cruisers quite nicely. I'm going to take down a couple of those with the light drones and then get the Valkyrie repaired up before we go into the next room. That's the plan. 
So this isn't a very taxing mission, but it's a good demonstration of how I'm using the different types of drones against different targets, particularly when we get into the next room. I have also recorded myself doing another mission, which is a very long mission, took over an hour to do, so I might do, I'll do that as a separate video. That's the uh, Worlds Collide mission, so let me know if you'd like to see my run on that using the ward. But again, that was using wardens. I'm going to be using the bouncers today. So I pulled the light drones in now, I put the mediums out, lock up that one straight off the drone window. It takes a while to lock in a battleship, but there he is. This is two times speed, by the way. So I'm going to wrap up his armour and his shield before he goes off a fighting again. With my skills in my ship, I'm getting an optimal range on the bouncers of just under 50 kilometers. They've then got 45 kilometer fall off. So uh, their maximum range is, I'm going to aim for around 60 to maybe, 60 to 70 to deploy them. And then we'll see how we go. I haven't flown a Dominix for quite a long time. I was quite pleased to get my hands on one again. Got quite a cool skin for it. Can't remember what it's called, but it looks quite funky. But a Dominix does remind me of my very, very early days in EVE, simply because we met up with a couple of guys who were still playing, Black Soul and Grey Lord Kane, out there in Nullsec. Um, we were all super noobs. They were super excited. Um, we'd only played for two or three days, and I'm going back like 12 years now, so... When you started the game, you had no skills. They were super excited though, bought a Plex, bought themselves some nice ships, including a Dominix. Announced, I bought a Dominix, I can't wait to fly it. And then we pointed out that it would take them about two months, three months to be able to learn the skills to get in it. Because as I said back then, you had to learn skills before you could even get in a frigate. Anyway, we're in the second room, so let's get on with it, shall we? I've got the bouncers out. I'm locking up the frigates at about 80 kilometers away, and I'm going to start picking those out, sniping those out. Now, as you'll see in the middle, I'm getting a lot of misses. The tracking isn't great, but I don't need to hit them much. And these will nicely pick out the frigates. The wardens will do it from 100 kilometers away, I've found. Might take a few hits. What this means is once the rats have lost their frigates and their destroyers, your drones are then much safer to go out and about. It also means I can then become mobile because right now I need to sit here as I am with the bouncers. I could fly away, but I'd have to come back to be able to pick them up. But just sat here, if I can tank the damage that might be incoming, there's not much coming in on me at the moment at all, I'm pleased to say. I can keep the drones repaired up if they start getting a bit of damage from being sat here. And once the rats come out to me, because obviously they're getting kited out to me here, I can put out the medium drones and the heavy drones and start moving around, pull range, etc. and have that flexibility. But I've found these sentry drones, their best role for me so far is just picking out the smaller ships. I'm going to leave the bouncers out and I'm going to see how we get on against the cruisers as they come in but i am going to speed the footage up now so you've got a sense for what's going on so it's the bouncers out snipe out the frigates the cruisers are going to come into me now i'm actually hitting one of the battleships right now and that's going down reasonably well i'm very pleased to say once the cruisers get in too close maybe for the bouncers to be able to track them and hit them well or they start taking too much damage i'll pull the bouncers put out the valkyries and start moving either put in range or get a bit of traversal going just to mitigate my damage that is basically the plan and then once the cruisers are done pull the medium drones put out the heavy drones and they can go and hit the battleships as appropriate that's the plan so i'm pulling the bouncers in now i put out the kaldari navy wasps not quite the right damage type but it doesn't matter and i'm now going to turn around pull range fire the micro warp drive just get a bit of range the battleships are getting a little bit close so the heavy drones can go out and start taking down the battleships that have got in closest. I'm going to pull range and then just stop and maybe drop the bouncers again if that is appropriate. Let's see what the cruisers do. So we're going to stop the micro warp drive now. That's fine. We're going to put the resistance modules on. Don't forget that because we're getting into armor now. I'm really not sure that I need the dual reps on this fit. We'll talk about it maybe a little bit later, but I think I could drop one of the reppers and maybe get another damage module on there, another drone damage amplifier but then uh, I'll probably get caught out. It's really up to you that obviously the closer you get to the rats, the more damage you are going to take. Now on this mission, you can blitz this. You only need to go and take out that angel personnel transporter and grab the loot from inside it and go. But I'm actually testing out the drones really primarily here, so I'm just going to kill everything as I usually do. But you can blitz it. 
and I'm sure if we stormed in over there, there'd be quite a bit of damage incoming, but uh, I'm not going to get that brave just yet. If you know you've got a broad fit ship, then by all means get stuck in, or just an OP ship of whatever persuasion. But anyway, that is those three battleships down that were kind of chasing me out, so I'm going to stop out here now, pull in the heavy drones, put the bouncers back out, and let them have another crack at these cruisers. I just want to see how they get on taking these cruisers out as the cruisers get closer into us. So let's see that now. I'm pretty impressed with the job that they do. Obviously this footage is at two times speed, but I'm taking these down nice and quickly. You don't get the DPS out of the sentry drones that I would out of the heavy drones, and obviously that is technically an issue, but application is very important too, of course. And definitely being able to switch to being mobile with combat drones out rather than being forced to be stationary with sentry drones out makes all the difference. And it's one of the reasons that I prefer not to have a micro jump drive, a micro jump drive on my ship and just stick to the micro warp drive. I'm probably only going to fire it three or four times on a site. That's three or four cycles maybe to pull range. So it's never going to be a big drain on my cap and I can be exactly where I want to be almost depending on my mood if i'm chilling out and i want to watch a bit of netflix in the background i can sit a hundred off with wardens out and just keep myself a hundred out but uh if you want to get a bit more stuck in you can get in closer get out the combat drones keep yourself mobile and tank a bit of damage so it's quite a nice flexible ship in that way and certainly one you could probably tweak and tune to your preference and your play style and of course your skills the cruisers have gotten a little bit close, not dangerously close, but it's just a bit hard for the bouncers to hit them. So I've pulled them, put the Valkyries back out, finish off these last two cruisers, and then we can get started on the last group of rats over there. And of course I can start heading over there as I am now because I haven't got to babysit the sentry drones. It's a little bit funny that they're called sentry drones, but it actually feels most of the time like it's you who's sitting there babysitting them and keeping them safe, <laughs> to be honest, rather than the other way around. But uh, I enjoy them a lot, and especially the way they clear those frigates off the field from uh, many kilometres away. That's cool. And while we head over there, let's have a quick chat about this super handsome scope syndication ferox skin available to you guys Leave your comments down below with your in-game name on screen now at last week's winners. Well done, you guys. Leave a comment down below. Remember your in-game name so I know who to send the skin to should you win one. How do you get on with drones? How do you use your sentry drones? What's your favourite drone ship? Drone-related comments, but you know me. It's pretty random. Leave a comment. You might win one of these very, very nice skins. Anyway, back into the room, and I'm just starting to lock up the frigates here in the second lot, about 70 kilometers away, and then I'm going to just stop the ship, drop the bouncers, and start shooting, and again, just snipe out the frigates, and indeed the destroyers too, and then we'll move on to the cruisers, as and when. But this is basically the way of keeping your drones safe. If you were to put out medium drones with the frigates and destroyers still on grid, they're the ones that would be really munching into your drones. Having a, a really long drone control range is very good, but it also means if you need to pull your drones back to the ship, because they are getting beaten up, they've got a very long way to come. And obviously the bigger the drones, the slower the drones. So I'm finding using the sentry drones, and then to finish off the battleships, getting in close and dropping out the heavy drones. And if I needed to be, I could stay close enough to be repairing those heavy drones. But they really shouldn't be taking much damage, because battleships should not be applying very well to it heavy drones at all unless maybe they've actually got a really long journey out there and they've got minimal traversal because of it so again dumping them out close keeps them much much safer having all the small ships off the grid first keeps them double safe certainly seems to be working for me anyway i do have space for five more light drones i don't need any more spare hornets or light combat drones you could bring salvage drones if that tickled your fancy. ECM drones might be an idea. It depends on where you're going with your ship and what's going on in your local system, I guess. But yeah, there's a little bit of space, even though I've got such a great selection of drones on board. For a few more, we've got two battleships left. I'm going to do a little cheeky flyby as I'm actually now approaching the loot ship. Tank clothes on the way through. Wave to my new friends on the way past. But I'm certainly finding the Sentry Drones very enjoyable. 
I know traditionally they're probably used in a much more standoff way. You keep at your range and you use your and you use your drones just to pew the ships away from miles away. Maybe with a micro jump drive. There you are. Look at that crashing straight into the personnel carrier. <laughs> Hello, I'm here. But I found a way to integrate the Sentry drones into my more, I guess, rash, aggressive, impatient play style. So they're a great way for me to start off picking out those nasty little ships. And then I can get a little bit more stuck in. And uh, we'll see how far we can go. I might try dropping some of the tank off this ship just to speed up the pewing of stuff. If you want to see more of the Dominics, let me know in a comment down below. And once we've run a few missions with it, no doubt I might actually be taking this one over to low sec to have a bit of a bit of a fun. Now that I guess battleships are a little bit more fun to use in low sec because... Well, I haven't actually seen the prices come down much yet, although they're more sensible than they were by far. But they're certainly tankier than they were if you go for that passive tank, the armour plates, or indeed the hull tank, who knows. So uh, we'll see. We might be seeing more of this one way or the other anyway. But we've got there, the loot is grabbed. I've always got some spare drones in my cargo hold there to, you know, to switch back to Serpentis missions, because <laughs> I might forget before I undock. You never know, and then I, at least I can just dock up in this local system where the mission is and switch to the right ones. So there's the Dominics, there's me learning how to use Sentry Drones in a way that kind of fits in with my play style. I do find these days that with Eva, I just find ways of using what there is to kind of integrate that into what I do rather than uh, really go off on too much of a tangent and play the meta of what it is I'm actually flying. I find it a bit more fun that way. So let me know how you use your sentry drones. Are you a, a long range purist or, or do you use them a little bit like me as the first weapon to clear the way for the little horde of pesky drones you're going to unleash? Anyway, that's it for now my friends. We will be back very soon with another video. Let me know if you want to see more of the Dominics. I've got lots of video ideas and I will get around to making them all one day. I promise you. Leave your comments with your in-game name if you want a chance at a Ferox skin. Say hi anyway, I do like it. Subscribe if you want to stay in touch. Leave the video a like if you have enjoyed it and found it enjoyable. It really helps the channel. It just means that uh, YouTube shows the video to more people and they get to have a look too. And spreading the knowledge is what we're all about. But take care of yourselves and each other. Fly brave. And for now, my friends, goodbye.